Hello everybody, what is going on? My name is Steggy, and this video goes out to the Elgato Cam Link owners. Or rather, anyone who uses a camera as a webcam. As you could be using another capture card for this, or even the built-in webcam features of certain models of cameras. However, if you're one of these people, you own a real camera. And chances are that camera's probably kind of expensive, and you'd probably like to see it live a long and happy life. So in a few more words, this video's for you. Now, just to get this out of the way, because I have had a lot of people ask me over the years if streaming with a camera will burn out its sensor. And the answer to this is no. In actuality, using a camera for streaming is actually less strenuous on a camera than shooting video or taking photos, which is kind of ironic. But if you want me to make a full video debunking that myth, let me know in the comments section down below. But the purpose of this video is to talk about these guys right here, your IO ports. Now, these are very important if you're streaming because whether you're using a capture card or just a USB cable on your camera to use it as a webcam, you're going to be having cables come out of your camera. And 99% of the time, the IO ports on cameras are on the smaller end. So micro USB, micro HDMI, etc. So while these ports are space saving, the issue is they can also be somewhat fragile. And so the point of this video is to show you precautions you can take in order to protect these ports to ensure your camera lives a long and happy life. Now, you might be asking, I've used micro ports for years. Why should I worry about them now? Well, in a streaming setup, I can picture at least three scenarios. Number one, in the mixture of cables you have being connected to your computer, your, your mouse, keyboard, stream deck, microphone, headset, etc. These cables can sort of clump together, creating a heavier weight on each cable. So this added weight can exert a downward force on the micro HDMI port of your camera. Or let's say you're looking to rig your camera far away from your computer and need a longer micro HDMI cable. And with this longer length comes extra weight, which again will exert a downward force on the micro HDMI port. Or the third scenario, simply bumping into your camera or snagging the cable which could happen if you are changing out a keyboard at your computer setup, or if you have a sort of mobile video conferencing setup that's on your kitchen or coffee table, or you could just have cats, which are a wild card through and through. The point is, while it might be unlikely to happen, if it costs just a little bit of money to have a golden parachute and the peace of mind that comes with it, you might find it worth it. So in this video, I'm gonna show you three options, each at varying price levels and effectiveness, so you know what your options are. And as always, links to the products I'll be discussing are linked in the description panel down below. Now, these are affiliate links, which means if you choose to purchase through these links, I earn a small commission, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. So if you choose to do this, just know I appreciate you. So let's start with the cheapest option and work our way up. This is what I was using for a really long time for a few reasons, actually. They're called Red Whips, or the generic ones are just called Cable Ties. Now, you can pick these up in a pack of 10 for between 10 and $12, and they're available in multiple colors. I really like this kind of cable tie because it's super easy to take on and off, and I've been using these for years just as a general way to manage my cables. Before multi-mount came with cable organizing clips, I was using these to manage the cables coming from my key lights and my camera. But besides making things look neater, this provided some tension relief on the HDMI port of my camera. That's because if you tighten the fit of the cable tie, so long as you leave some slack above it, you're basically transferring the point of tension from the HDMI port of your camera to the point where the HDMI cable is gripped by this cable tie. So only the cable weight of what's above this tie is what puts tension on the HDMI port, which is barely any. And below the cable tie, the rest of the cable weight or any jostling of this cable might put some tension against the cable tie, but the HDMI port will be unaffected. Now, because these ties are spandexy, there is some give. So if you really tug on the cable hard, you could still cause some stress on the HDMI port, but you really need to be trying in order to do this. Now, if you wanted to, you could do something a bit more permanent with zip ties, which would be more secure, but I change my setup pretty often, so I prefer using these red whips. Also, with this option, you can also have multiple cables passing through this tie, so the USB cable, dummy battery, HDMI, whatever, can be used with this method. Let's talk about option number two. Here, we have a universal cable lock for cameras. Now, this one's really cool because it essentially has a female and a male quarter inch thread. So it's like a tripod coupler that goes between your mount and your camera and provides you with grommets to place your cables through so it can lock into place. 
So this works with literally any setup because all you need is a quarter inch thread, which literally any Camlink compatible camera will have. Now with the good, there are two negatives in my opinion. Number one is the cable management. Just because you end up having cables from your camera going horizontal right near the bottom of the camera, it just looks kind of messy. Now this is the best I could get my particular setup to look, but this is something to definitely keep in mind. Number two is the tunnels for the cables. Now, while there are two sizes, you have small tunnels this way and then larger tunnels going the other way. This is like the Goldilocks paradox because the small ones were too small for my HDMI cable and the large was just a little too big. So the cable wasn't necessarily locked into place. Not a huge deal because basically the only way the stress from tugging on these cables can actually pass through to your ports is if you're essentially pulling perfectly straight through the tunnels. Otherwise, the stress point is at the cable lock. Hopefully this explanation made sense. The moral of the story is you should be fine here. Now, the third way you can secure your cables is the best in my opinion, but it's also a decent bit more expensive. And that's by using a camera cage. Now, depending if you want to go with a name brand like Small Rig, or if you want to look at some of the generic brands on Amazon, you can get these cages for about $30 to $50. I have some linked for some of the Sony models I've recommended in past videos in the description panel, so be sure to check them out. But for this video, I picked up the Small Rig brand cage for my ZV-1 camera, which cost me $35. However, we're not done yet because the purpose of a cage is to give your camera mounting threads so you can mount accessories. And that's how we're going to protect our ports. So the one I ended up buying was a locked HDMI adapter for about $10. This allows me to plug a very short micro HDMI cable into my camera and then screw the other end of this adapter into the cage for a full sized HDMI port. So once you bend this adapter into the position you want, there's basically no pressure on your micro HDMI port. Then you have a completely separate full-sized HDMI port that's locked to your cage that you can plug and unplug an HDMI cable into it. Now there are other options like cable clamps that you can screw onto your cages, which will cover you for your HDMI port and your USB port. And these are again like 10 to $15. So depending on what you need connected to your camera, you can basically get it for these cages. Now, the one thing that the solution doesn't really cover is the dummy battery. But honestly, I don't have the same worry about the dummy battery cable like I do with the micro USB port or the micro HDMI port. Those are just way more fragile. But if you end up going with option two or three, there's nothing stopping you from also getting the Red Whip cable ties to protect yourself further. And like I mentioned earlier, they just help tidy up your cable management. So the total cost of my cage setup I had was just under $50, but depending on your camera model and the brand of cage you go with, you might be looking more at $40 for this complete setup. So if you compare that to the other two options that are under $20, it's definitely more expensive, but it's not insanely priced, especially when you're thinking about protecting a camera that might have cost you close to $1,000. But in any case, these are three ways you can help protect your camera against potential mishaps when you're dealing with cables permanently plugged into your setup. So my question for you is, after seeing this video, do you think you're going to go with any of these options? Which one do you think is best? Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, let me know if you think that this should be an accessory that Elgato makes for multi-mount. It wouldn't be too difficult to make something that installs on the multi-mount pole to lock cables into place. And since it would be on the multi-mount, it would look a lot neater like the setup I made with the red whips. Let me know in the comment section down below if this is something you'd like to see. If this video helped you out, be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to get subscribed for more great content. Once again, my name is Steggy and until my next video, I will catch you guys later.